Hey, where's my flight gear? There it is. What do you mean? Nice org. Away I go. I'll do a quick post on Twitter. <laughs> there we go, tweety tweet. Okay. The tweet paused the game. That was weird. But hey, stuff happens. Mm. to make sure I stop off and sell some stuff when I get the over. Creepy crack. leisurely flight I'm taking. The island of no use. Alcaz Island. Still not sure why it even st is in the game. <laughs> Quite weird. Ah, uh, the Echo Isles, where this lowly hunter began his game.
do see. The walls of Rogamar. <laughs> Up, oh, and again, my Zeppelin just arrived, so what we'll do then is we'll dismount. This actually works kind of well because I'm already inside the machine to do all my selling. Thick eye. There we go. And repair? Nothing to repair. I already did one or the other. There, two. All repaired and ready to go. And we're still part. One of my favorite things I used to do back in the day is get up on this. I used to take every Zeppelin, suit it on here. Yep. Every single Zeppelin flight. It's all right here for old time's sake. Game has been around for ten years. using Zeppelin's hardcore. Now it's all about porting everywhere. <clears throat> and here we are in Pure Salt Lake. I'm heading to Solomance, or Scholomance, depending on... Solomance. I always call it Solomance, always have. might be the wrong name. Might not be the right pronunciation, but just like a book, people pronounce place names and character names differently, person to person. And so I've called this instance Solomance ever since I first saw it. And this instance combined with the uh, sunken temple are probably two of the biggest blizzard screws that have ever been done in this game instance wise to characters who have been around for a long time. Anyway, taking care of that, uh, the reason why I'm stopping here is because this was the beginning of Solomon's actually. How has the entire zone it's in changed and how has the instance itself been completely altered? Well, it began from here. The bulwark used to be well, it still kind of is a wall between Tirasfall Glades 
and the edge of the plague lands. Here you see the Curious Fall Blades, which as everybody may or may not know, is the starting zone. Death Nail here is the starting zone for the undead player. Okay? In fact, this crypt right here is where Gutrend, my original Gutrend, got his birthplace. His rebirth place, I guess. And this used to be a Scarlet Monastery encampment. A Scarlet Crusade encampment, I should say. And then you come out to Tiraswell Glade, and this used to be the sort of Scarlet Monastery. The Scarlet Crusade had control of most of these lands. All the bad guys would be Scarlet Crusade. But when you got to the Bulwark, shit changed. First of all, the Western Plague Lands was not 3540. It was 50 to 55 minimum. Okay? Might even have gone higher. Might have even been 52, 58 or something like that. But 55 would have been the lowest it was. I'm or sorry, 50 would have been the lowest it was. I'm pretty sure 50 was. And in order to work in there, you had to first get to the bulwark. And the bulwark uh, would turn you away. You have no quests here until you got that high. And it was all about, holy crap, what's beyond these gates? What's beyond these gates? Because any mobs that were there would kick your ass so hard if you tried to wander in early. It was stupid. Then you'd have the Western Plague Lands. Obviously, I've revealed the whole shitload of that right now. Um, we're going to get into that in just a second. I'm going to start revealing some of the areas. And hopefully the wife, when she edits this particular instance, will edit from the beginning of the discussion I've done while I was still flying in the air at the bulwark. Because this is all pertinent to Solomance's current form and what it is versus what it was. So you'd originally get quests from here. Quests are still here. But... You originally got quests, and they would take you into the first section on the other side of the gate. And of course you couldn't fly, keep that in mind. So, the first section you'd have is this area. Fellstone Field. And in the center of Fellstone Field was a, a miniature... Well, the, the art style is now very similar to what's now known as Naxramas or Naxxramas, whatever you want to call it, Nax, which is a, uh, a Wrath of the Lich King instance now, it's a raid, um, and in the center of this field would be a big ass cauldron, and around the field would you'd have uh, skeletons, not alliance laborers, you'd have skeletons, and zombies, and ghouls, and ghosts and there'd be a big guy wandering around closer to the actual uh, cauldron and that guy would have the cauldron's key and what you would have to do is you have to kill the guy with the cauldron key and then unlock the cauldron and spill its contents and destroy the cauldron basically then you'd go back to the bulwark and turn it in, and then he would say, well, there's another field with another cauldron. So then you'd fly over here, and Ander Hall was not the Ander Hall you find today either, by the way. Ander Hall has always been kind of the way it is right now, but it's, it was never this nice. Anderhall had elites through the yin-yang in the center of it, and fighting in this area was a challenge. Anyway, you'd have a, a you had a cauldron in the area, but more importantly in Anderhall you had to destroy the feed mills. Um, are there e even feed mills anymore? Let's fly around and look. I don't see them. Ander Hall was all about a matter of destroying the food. Okay, oh here we are. Here's the ruined feed mills at the next farm area. Okay. 
and this guy is reminiscent of the ones that you'd have to kill around the cauldron areas. Okay? So that would be the Anderhall section. Then you'd have another two fields. One north here. Here we are. The Menderstead, which is now, if you can believe it, an actual flight path. And there's no sign of any of the plague here now, not at all. Okay. Then you have another field of doom down here. Is this the withering? No, this is the writhing haunt. The withering would be the next one. And there would be a cauldron in the center of this field as well. Okay, and then you'd have the, I think it was called the Withering, and this was the final field. Is it even here? It is. Garen's Withering, and this, right here, is the base upon which the, there's the cauldron. There we go. So, that's what it used to, except it was green. It wasn't red, it was green. And the reason these were the plague lands is because this is where the plague was being produced by the enemy offshoot of the Forsaken. Okay? Which were the undead. So this is the last... Uh, this is the only cauldron that still exists. Anybody who knows Nax can see the Nax-ish kind of uh, artwork being used around the base. Okay, and this is what you had to do, and when you finally got all four, okay, one, two, three, and four, when you finally got all four cauldrons built, you were able to go back to the bulwark, and you were to give them the four keys for the four cauldrons, and they took those keys, and they melted them together, over there, baby. There you go. They took the four keys, melted them together. I'm sorry, I've got a cat that's right in my way. And that would give you one key. And that one key would allow you to access the instance known as Stolomance. Now, I want to make this very clear. This is the island that Stolomance. This is actually part of the original instance right here that you can no longer access. I'll talk about that when I'm in the instance. And there'd be a quest or two out here on the island that would ultimately lead you inside to the actual instance itself. Which is accessed through here. Okay. And the key that you worked so hard to get opened this door. With the exact same sound effect as it just did. And this, my friends, was how you attuned yourself to be able to run the Solomon's instance. You couldn't run the instance unless you were willing to hang out outside the door and wait for someone who had the key to open the door and then you'd sneak in and there would be you'd have the ability to open the door from inside at all times um, or you'd have to have someone in your party who was attuned. I was a completionist, I still am, so it was always about getting attuned. So that's part one of how Solomance has been nerfed. Simply put, you no longer need to do anything to access it, except for show up. Now we're going to talk about part two of how the entire instance has been completely changed and made a shadow of its former self. Now, 
first of all, your quests in here, I think there was only one quest and it was to kill the final boss. It never came from inside. This talking skull dude is a, an invention of the Cataclysm era. Finding the four tomes. The four tomes quest, I don't even remember if that was part of the original instance. End of the suffering. That's kill things on the way through. Or no, that might be the final boss actually. We'll deal with this reactor. Uh, those who are astute and have been paying attention to the other instance runs I've been doing will also note that Lillian Voss has uh, reappeared. I said that we'd be meeting up with her again later. And here she is as one of the bosses in this in this uh, school of necromancy. Necromancers are bad no matter how you slice it, folks. All the way through the game. So, let's get going forward into what they laughingly call Solomance now. If you're wondering why I'm sounding so damn bitter about this particular instance, it's because this used to be my favorite instance in the game. It was. I still enjoy doing it, but it's not what it used to be. No. Class is now in session. First of all, any pull in this area required a lot of skill because of the numbers that would be pulled. I mean, you can see I just pulled five off that first pull. That's a lot of that's a lot of magic users, and it wasn't just a matter of pulling them. You had to run back the fuck up the stairs, okay, and around here, preferably to about here, so that they'd all come up and gather around right here, so your tank could probably hold aggro on them while you burn them down. Obviously a mechanic that's no longer necessary in any part of the game whatsoever unless you're in a raid. Anyway. <clears throat> so you have to kill your way around the room. As you can see I'm doing. And at the back here there was in fact an item back here that you had to uh, Obtain. So let's let's say a version of the four tombs quest was in here, but the tombs were hidden a lot better than they are now. Now they're not hidden. I wouldn't I wouldn't in my right mind call the tomes hidden now. Okay, you had to check the frickin' shelves for the tomes back in the day. Now not even not even a little bit like that, as you'll see when I stumble on my way to the first one. I missed the second Yeah, look how look how hard it is to spot it. Mm -hmm. Sitting there on a table all by itself. It's not even hidden in the stacks. Remember how we almost got killed trying to find one of the tones and it was like right in the back on the shelf? Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, we're trying to avoid aggroing the main boss. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I remember the good old days. It was great. It used to be with the killing of a third of these, it auto-set off the boss. Now you actually have to aggro the boss itself. My aggroing of the boss will kill the boss down to 1% upon which the boss will zip into this. Now there is an interesting um, um, game mechanic here. Class dismissed. Okay. These icy things sweeping across the room. I'm pretty sure that that shit kills you if you get caught in it. And it's, it blocks off every part of the room and then marks its way across the floor from the one side. I can never die. But as soon as you get her down to the first part and put her soul in here, you know, now there's random stuff flying around the room that causes damage, but in all actuality it doesn't take much to kill this boss. 
Okay, so boss number one is down. The door opens, and we're allowed to go into the next section. Here comes Senior Cocking Floating Skull. He's going to go meander his way into the next area. <coughs> now, I want to stress very clearly that not everything that Blizzard has done with this instance is bad. Just 99.9% .9 of it is bad. This next room is kind of a permutation of what used to be kind of like two rooms, sort of. It's a little hard to explain. Um, this room didn't exist in the form it's in. This room was a hall with mobs in it. Pretty dull, right? Pretty frickin' dull. But what this room did have in it that was interesting was the first of the removed boss rooms. Oh, I, I wanted you to kill that guy. Thank you. Um, this room... It's not even really worth clearing this, but I'm doing it because I want to make a point. I'm trying to uh, make a very specific point about the instance here. Uh, none of this stuff was here. I know this looks very pretty, but if you look on my... Have you put it on Instagram, Emma? Or did you put it somewhere else? The actual... Uh, picture from the old book. Uh, that would be a page. And, um, well, it should be on Instagram. Yeah, well, it should be on Instagram, but it should not be on Twitter. That's part of the things you have to uh, change, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we got a big ass candle here. Candlestick mages, really? Anyway, okay, so these guys go down with really no actual effort whatsoever. Now Jandis, I want to discuss Jandis. She's dead now, because I just killed her, but I want to discuss her a little bit here. Um, Janice wasn't in this room. This room is actually a basement. The Hall of Illusions was actually one floor down, accessed from a stairway in the Butcher's Sanctum, and it was originally underneath the Butcher's Sanctum, accessed by going through a stairway here, and downstairs and under this area. And it was many more wall uh, rows of books. Many more. Not You couldn't see through them, but loads of skeletons, and in one small little nook was where she was found. Let me just get the book here. And she did the same thing that she did here, although you couldn't see it because I killed her too fast. Unfortunately, there's no way to do damage to her without killing her because of the level I'm at. She would create multiple versions of herself, and you had to keep grinding them down until you found out which one was her, and then you killed that one in particular. Yeah. Um, that is the same mechanic that she had here when she died. It's just that uh, this is a much larger space than she was ever in. She was in a tiny little alcove. The candles were actual candle color, not this sick green crap. And it's a gorgeous freaking room. Um, Emma will assure, uh, she's going to make sure that that actually is visible soon. Yep. On uh, my Instagram. And maybe even post it on the uh, Facebook page, the yep. Gut Run Facebook page. Uh, all those pictures can go there. Oh yeah. Show what it used to be. And uh, so that's that's a boss that's missing. Now we go to the next room. Now the next room is My a bastardization of something. First of all, there's Lil. <laughs> Friends of yours, boss. You there. Being taunted. Make yourselves useful and deal with these summoners. 
Now this room is uh, no longer, it, it's not anything like this today. Summoner this again was just a traveling room. It was all one, or maybe it was split into two rooms, doesn't really matter. Um, what the room actually was, was an exit, or an entrance rather, to a boss room. The boss room that I showed you from outside. Which is actually this room right here. Now, if you look carefully, you can see that they've even gone so far as to change the coloring of what you can see out there. Kind of like a purplish twilight. What happened in that room is there was a gargoyle that would be summoned by interacting with the tomb there, this gate would close and then you'd have to fight the gargoyle and the only people who would be able to fight the gargoyle are the people who were in the room and the gate closed. So you can conceivably have just a tank in there and dying easily because everybody else is still dicking around out here killing off random crash mobs. So that's something that's been obviously changed quite a bit from the way it used to be. That's boss, obviously, no longer even exists in the game. Flesh and bone and soul. But that's not the only change to come to this part of the game. So much in once I ripped out your throat. Have you looked in a mirror recently? My dear, We're you should Don't embrace want to this gift that has been bestowed upon you. Not let you curse another soul with this nightmare. We just finished down in these guys, we'll discuss right, the next part. Come, boss. Your fate awaits you. Now, what they've done here. There's these little bone piles. The boss we're about to meet is called Rattledor. <clears throat> Rattledor used to be on all fours. He used to live in a room that is no longer in the instance either. That was accessed by going into this room here, which was a dragon whelping hatching room. And then down a flight of stairs at the back, which would take you down below that room, where you would fight Rattle Gore on a pile of bones that filled the entire room. In addition, there were little vents, three on each side, where if you weren't careful, you would accidentally fall down into the room below and be unable to rejoin your party without aggroing Rattle Gore. Now, Rattle Gore is still in the game, he's up here. Um, to avoid one of him, one of his attacks, you use the game mechanic of putting on this bone armor. But uh, let's just one shot him and get him out of our misery. On to the next room. Now, this room is really where the dungeon began to take good shape. There used to be a nice big table here, it used to be a nice workroom area, this part of the uh, place. Obviously, it's changed. It's just a bunch of mobs now. Although, I did say before that there is one nice change to the instance, and that is in the introduction of what they call here Flesh Horrors. Flesh Horrors are grafted together chunks of aberrations, like the big guy that we were talking about outside, who actually uh, himself was a bunch of shit put together kind of like a Frankenstein monster type situation. The flesh horrors here, as you're going to see, have a stupidly high hit point count. 80,000 versus what you're usually fighting, which in this area is like 5. But they have things on them called skin grafts. Let's just find one. Here if we can see if we can cycle through to one here. There we go, meat graph. Meat graphs have only two grand to pop. And what the idea is, is in order to kill these flesh horrors in a smart way, 
all you have to do is tear apart all the meat grafts and while the tank basically aggroes the flush for itself. The meat grafts can't do anything. All they do is provide the rest of your party with a great way of taking them apart. You kill the meat grafts and everything oozes out, you see. You do that and everything dies at once. Quite gross, but a lovely game mechanic. And you can see all the blood spraying out of the walls. It's 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 gross, but it's a great game mechanic, and it's the only good thing that they've added to this dungeon. Everything else about this dungeon has been removed. Let's get our book out of the way. And now we're just going to go around killing everything in the room. So that I can more easily show you where things have been removed. There are a lot of players out there who have been playing this game since it first came out. Since its first incarnation, as it were. And a lot of us are hoping upon hope that at some point they're going to allow us to play the original instances on a specific server that will allow us to enjoy the game the way it originally released with all its faults, but all its good parts too. This particular passageway, as you can see here, this area back there, it led to the stairway that took you down to uh, Jan Desperov's original resting place and where you fight her down below. There was also a period of time when there was an extra boss that was put in here that was just a big monster of a guy can't remember what his name was. Not really important now that he doesn't exist anymore. So we're not going to bother really talking about him beyond that. Let's kill these idiots. This gate is the entrance into the Dragon Whelp room. Can you even see? Wow, they've even they've changed it. It looks kind of the same with all the, the vaults on the walls looks kind of the same. Now it's as interesting. Um, little bloody uh, waterfall there, I guess. You can see where it's falling into the floor. That would be one of the areas where you'd accidentally fall down. And they've eliminated the entrance to the stairway at the back of the room. It's kind of a minor version of the room where Leroy Jenkins' achievement has gotten. It was a minor version of that particular room. Additionally, there were ghouls that wandered in here, mobs. And when they died, they'd create a cloud of uh, poison that you couldn't stand in or else you'd die really quickly. So you had to wait until those clouds disappeared before you'd be able to move on. Plus, there were lots of books here to read on these shelves uh, for the well-read achievement. In fact, having been in some of these instances and seen that these books are no longer there, I both know how the fuck you get the well-read achievement nowadays, but that's another story altogether. Did you forget? Now, in here, there always was a boss, but there were ghouls all around the corners. You had to clear around the edges first in order to access the boss properly. Now turn your lovely moon blades on our guests. And fetch me their bones. Sadly, Lillian's going to meet her end at our hands at this I point. I can't fight him! Die, necromancer! The bones! Rats! Leave me to die alone, please. Uh, killing that boss opens up this, obviously, portcullis. This used to have to be opened by a rogue, if I'm not mistaken. And you need a rogue to try to even access that particular chest. Now that chest happens to be Lillian's loot. So even that's changed. I mean, they can't leave both fucking up for them, you know? Like, this can't. 
Blizzard just can't stop touching their shit. Ruining it for everybody. Anyway, okay, so. The big problem in this room is accidentally aggroing the students. The students were never originally red. The students were all yellow back in the day. In other words, unless you aggroed one, they would never come after you. This board student here used to be an actual boss. Don't know if that's interesting to anybody, but that's how the game was originally set up. And there was an item to be obtained in this room, and it was sitting right here on this table. Obviously, that's not so much the case anymore. There is, however, a book in this room, the final book to be obtained. We'll get to that. I got a lot more to say about this room in particular, so bear with me, folks. Bear with me. Alright, so. Here's our final book. That's taken care of. This guy. Professor Slate. I don't know if it was the same character. But he was the boss that was in this room up in that top area. Now let's discuss this room. As you can see, I'm in the second part of the instance. The first part of the instance was the room over here. This is the second part. Okay. There's Amos, Belgor, the Butcher Sanctum. Okay, from here, which is where I am, you can see there's an alcove here. This alcove was yet another stairway to go somewhere else. That's right, another hallway to take you down to the labs. There was an actual laboratory, or laboratory, if you like, if you're British. And in the laboratory, you had to, there was a couple of quest completions you had to do down there by getting certain items and then killing the uh, uh, head scientist down there. Obviously, that's all gone too. The only nice thing that they've had in this section is these nice pictures of random alliance characters. Anyway. Let's turn in what we've done so far. Hockey the Skull Boy. Alright. Now then, the Headmaster's Retreat. The biggest change in this instance is actually down this area. If you haven't come to study, I'll use you to teach a lesson. The location of the final boss is the correct location. However, the method of obtaining access to the final boss has been 100% completely eliminated. If you follow around these ledges, you will find rooms filled, they, they even got them still filled with enemies. Okay? Each one of these rooms provided its own unique challenge with its own unique boss. So if you're doing the math, that's three bosses right there that aren't in the game again. But wait, there's more. This room, this room, and this room also had a boss in each of those rooms. And there was a different game mechanic that had to be employed in each of those rooms in order to ensure successful completion of each of the bosses, after which you would then come out of the last of those six rooms, you would always do the bottom three first, and then you'd come up and do these three up here last, and then when you came out, the headmaster, not the dark master, the headmaster, would then be visible down here and then started one of the more interesting boss fights in the game. Let me just have a sip and I'll tell you. It wasn't just a matter of killing the final boss. It was a matter of really knowing your character well. 
He still does something kind of akin to this if you keep him alive long enough, I think. I'm pretty sure I've seen characters actually have this happen. But if you take your time at killing him, he will teleport you randomly into a room where you have to kill things in order to get back out. Yeah. Now, this is part of the original game mechanic. What the original game mechanic would do is at certain times in the fight, it didn't matter how fast you were dropping him, at certain levels of hit points, he would randomly select one of your party and deliberately throw you in one of these six rooms I just pointed out. Upon which, you would have to single-handedly kill all the mobs in the room in order to unlock the door at the end, in order for you to manually have to walk out of the room and rejoin the fight. It also took a hell of a lot longer to kill him because he had a hell of a lot more hit points than he does now. Keep in mind, Solomance was a level 60 instance. It was meant to be completed at maximum level, just like Dire Maul was. However, as you can see, six bosses in just this section were moved. Two bosses moved out of their original locations to streamline the instance. A gargoyle boss completely removed. Wonderful artwork completely removed. Solomance used to be one of the brightest and most fun instances to play a pickup group with. Now it's had its balls chopped off. You can still come into these rooms now after you kill the boss and see what was in here. And each of these rooms had a very specific thing you had to do in order to complete them properly. You didn't just waltz in and kill them, you know? Vault of the Ravinian? The Ravinian was the boss. One of the Barovs was the boss. If you know your uh, lore as far as the uh, Tirasol Glades area, you've been dealing with the Barov. The up here was the Barov's as well. One of the Barov's burial vaults was up here. And it ultimately led to Solomon's. The Barov's used to be a very powerful family in the area. The Shadow Vault. One of the females would spawn up here with her tomb up here. Like, I'm not kidding, folks. They have taken so many things out of it. Now, obviously, the rooms are open now because he's dead, therefore, you gotta let everybody who's been teleported back out, right? But I just want to show you all that these used to be actual... The Coven. Oh, this was an interesting one. You had to have a magic... I can't remember which... I think it was Frost? I think was so. Was it Frost? I think so. The Coven was full, filled with witches. Yeah. But the boss in here could only be killed by a frost item. You could take him down to 1% all you like, but you had to finish off the last one hit point of frost, or you couldn't complete that boss at all. Hall of the Dam, another area that was swarmed with mobs, you had to take out a final boss. See, all of these rooms had such intricate boss stuff. And it's all been removed, all been taken out by Blizzard's so-called nerfing of the game. And especially with this instance, it's such a waste because this instance had a haunted house feel to it right from the beginning. Yeah, it's a school, but it was like a big haunted house. It was like the Haunted Mansion ride at frickin' Disney World. And one of the key elements of the game, because it was such a it was such a, a hard instance, is that the bridge that I'm standing below, up above there, that's where the main entrance into the instance actually is. And there's a break in the uh, wall there. I'll show it to you when we get up there, where you would be able to fall back down and go through half the instance in a blink of an eye to allow yourself to access. Uh, parts of the instance that you already might have gotten to before you died. It was meant to be 
a uh, speedy way to get yourself back to where you were. But they've made this instance a shadow of its former self, and not a good shadow. Yeah, you added some flesh horrors. Yeah, you have to kill the skin grafts in order to actually take down. That's great. That's great. But you took out my gargoyle, and you moved Rattlegore into a room that was just boring. And Jandis doesn't have the gorgeous candlelit origin that, it, that she originally had when you'd fight her. And, and you've eliminated six other bosses. And... I mean, really, what have you done to the incense, Blizzard? What have you done to it? See, this is where you can fall through. I'll, I'll show you specifically. See that entrance there? That's where that uh, um, chest is when you kill Lillian Voss. That's where the chest appears, and that's the entrance that takes you into the area where all the students were. So there you have Solomon's, folks. What's up? They nerfed the instance so damn much I'm surprised they didn't just remove it from the game. Which they've done with other instances. Well, let's not get into that right now. Right now we're going to head ourselves to Light's Hope Chapel. And that's where I'm going to take my break and stop today's particular stream. Obviously I had a lot to say about Solomans. And uh, those of you who remember the good old game the way it used to be will be very understanding of why I'm so pissed off about what they've done to this instance, and uh, we'll leave it there. Next time I stream, which will probably be a during the weekend, this week, I will be streaming... Let's see, I'm going to start off with Stratholme's main entrance and Stratholme's service entrance. Then we're going to go to an instance that, very much like Solomance, has been reduced to a very thin shred of its former glory. Yeah. That instance, of course, Sunken Temple. Um, everything that was good about it, everything that made it challenging, everything that made it memorable has been sucked right out of the Sunken Temple instance. Pissed completely away, let me tell ya. Uh, for those who are interested, here's a miniature version of Nax Ramas. That's actually the Death Knight start zone. Whether you're Alliance or Horde, you start up there. Covering over the back end of White's Hope Chapel. I'm here. Might as well get the flight path, right? Yeah. Might as well. And I'll be selling all my stuff probably while I'm offline. Yeah. So for now I'll just come in here and park myself. So yes, next time I'm going to be doing Stratholme's two entrances. And of course I'm going to be going to Sunken Temple. And from there I'm going to be doing Black Rock Depths. Now when I say Black Rock Depths in its entirety, I mean I'm going to be killing all the bosses and going from beginning to end. Then I'm going to be doing Lower Black Rock Spire in its entirety. And by that again, I mean I'm going to be killing all the bosses from beginning to end. Don't expect me to do all the mobs. It's not going to happen. So I'm going to spill some tea on my chest. And I'm going to sign off now with my quick branding messages. Uh, let's see. If you're watching this live on Twitch, remember you can see the highlights from this video on my YouTube channel, GutRend. They'll be up either later today or tomor early tomorrow posted there, instance by instance, and one complete uh, video with the entire stream from today in one chunk. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, GutRend, please take note that I stream live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash GutRend, and I post about my stream times on Twitter at GutRend. I also have a GutRend Facebook page. 
I can be found on Amazon, IMDb, Instagram, and Tumblr as GutRend. And you can find me on the Xbox systems as The Real GutRend. Capital T, capital R, capital G, The Real GutRend. Feel free to friend me there, I'll friend you back. And if you follow me on YouTube or Twitch or Twitter or like my Facebook page, you'll more than likely get a follow and a like in return. So that'll be it for today's stream, folks. I hope you enjoyed the instances I did. I managed to knock off three Dire Mall instances, ZF, and Solomance for a total of five instances today. I'll be doing the same next time. It'll be Sunken Temple, both of Strathholm's instances, and two of the Black Rock Mountain instances for another group of five. And as I said, that'll probably be done this weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. So.